answer the question, what is the difference between basic writing and the difference between balanced writing? So whenever we talk about something being basic, we're referring to it as being the most simplest thing for the horse and rider to understand. So when we're first teaching a horse how to be ridden, or we're reschooling a horse such as an off-the-track thoroughbred, we're going to ride them in basic riding. That refers to us using one rein and one leg at a time to steer the horse. So for instance, if we bump the horse's nose to the left, indicating we want him to circle left, then we'll squeeze with the right leg to push him in that direction to travel. As the horse starts to understand these simple basic cues, then we'll start to complicate the maneuvers, and then we'll start to add in another leg and another rein, and that will lead us to balanced riding. Balanced riding is not necessarily collected riding, it just refers to that our horse understands the difference between an inside rein and outside rein, and an inside leg and an outside leg. After balanced riding, then comes collected riding. So Kara's gonna demonstrate on this off the track thoroughbred how to use basic riding. So since this horse, his only response to pressure is to lean on it and to go faster, we have to teach him how to turn his head and neck left and right. Kara's also gonna ride him with a little bit of slack in the reins because if she tries to just hold his face, he's gonna feel that pressure and he's gonna wanna take off and go forward with it. So Kara's gonna demonstrate how she's going to circle with her reins being so long. So she'll catch both reins in her right hand, then she'll slide down the left rein and she'll bump the horse's nose out over her knee. And see how the horse turns his head? Good. Now Kara sit up nice and tall. Now she'll squeeze with her right leg to form a circle. Now Kara, drop your left rein and let him go straight ahead. Now she's going to do a circle to the right. So she'll catch the cross in the left hand, down the right rein, lead the horse's nose, and see how he's following his nose? And if the horse doesn't turn his head and neck very well, she can exaggerate the rein by bumping her hand a little bit more like this. The reason we wanna be out over the knee using an open rein is because one, the horse can see your hand and help the horse follow. It also stretches that neck way out wide and around so you can bring his head around. So now that Kara's horse kind of has a little bit of an understanding of turning his nose left and right, so he follows his nose in the direction of travel, we're gonna to start to ride this horse in balanced riding. Now when we take the contact up, he's gonna to start to drop his nose and come into frame. Good, gather up a little more rein, Kara. And now I want you to put a little inside leg on and we're gonna drift him over. So now Kara is going to also use a little outside rein to help lead the horse towards the rail. So we want him to make the biggest circle possible. So now she's in what's called balanced riding. And this horse isn't off the track thoroughbred, so he hasn't done a lot of right turning in his life, so he's a little stiff. Now, Kara, as he gets softer and softer, you're going to stretch your leg down, start to sit taller. He's less and less gay. That's it. So this horse would not be able to do this nice drift or yield to the inside leg and the inside rein if he didn't understand how to follow his nose left and right. A good example is watching a horse travel around the arena. Naturally, they travel a little canted, meaning if the horse is traveling around clockwise, he's actually gonna look slightly out to the left or slightly out to the rail. What we wanna teach these horses is how to move in a circle, but it all starts with learning how to follow the nose left and right. 